Russia's first lunar mission in decades has ended in failure, with its Luna 25 spacecraft crashing into the moon's surface. This is truly a significant blow to the already reeling Russian space industry. Let's find out exactly what happened and how Russian space is dealing with all of this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Roscosmos, Russia's space agency, said it lost touch with Luna 25 on Saturday around 2.57 p.m. Moscow time. The measures taken on August 19th and 20th to search for the device and get into contact with it did not yield any results, the space agency reported. According to a preliminary analysis, Luna 25 switched to an off-design orbit before the collision, Roscosmos said. It was not immediately clear what caused the crash. A specially formed commission will investigate the reasons for the loss of Luna 25, the agency added. The news comes a day after the spacecraft reported and an emergency situation as it was trying to enter a pre-landing orbit, according to Roscosmos. During the operation, an emergency situation occurred on board the automatic station, which did not allow the maneuver to be performed with the specified parameters, Roscosmos shared in a Telegram post on Saturday. Luna 25 launched from the Vostochny Cosmodrome in Russia's Amur Oblast on August 10th and sent its first in-space photos back to Earth on August 13th, including selfies with the Moon and Earth in the background. The mission swiftly reached lunar orbit, a milestone that Roscosmos announced on August 16th. The spacecraft's primary landing zone was a region called Bugoslavsky Crater, which are the southwest of Manzini Crater and the south of Pentland A Crater. Aside from hunting water ice, Luna 25's main science goals included examining the regolith and rocks around it, looking at the wispy lunar atmosphere, and testing out technology for future landings on the moon. Luna 25's trajectory allowed it to surpass India's Chandrayaan-3 lunar lander, which launched in mid-July on the way to the lunar surface. So far, India's Chandrayaan-3 is still going according to plan. This is how it's going to go. The second and final deboosting operation has successfully reduced the LM orbit to 25 kilometers by 134 kilometers. The module would undergo internal checks and await the sunrise at the designated landing site. The powered descent is expected to commence on August 23rd of 2023 around 1745 IST. Hopefully, luck will shine upon India's Chandrayaan-3. But now back to Russia's incident, which is a major setback. The Soviet Union was the first country to launch a satellite, and the first person to orbit Earth was a Russian, Yuri Gagarin, in 1961. But the Soviets lost the moon race when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the lunar surface in 1969, and no cosmonauts ever made it there. Although the Soviets landed a few uncrewed lunar missions, the last one was in 1976, the same year NASA Mart, the U.S. Bicentennial with a mission to Mars. Now, Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to recapture the glory days of the Soviet-era space program. Last year, shortly after his troops rolled into Ukraine, Putin toured the remote Vostochny Cosmodrome near the Chinese border and declared that the uncrewed Luna 25 mission, which has been in the works for more than a decade, must be complete in 2022. Essentially, the modest moon mission was supposed to make Russia great in space again. Sadly, that didn't happen, and what's worse, it failed horribly. The loss of Luna 25 could also be a blow to Russia's plans to fly a series of moon missions and its effort to develop a permanent crew based on the moon with China. Roscosmos plans to follow Luna 25 with a lunar orbiter called Luna 26, and then two more landing missions, Luna 27, which will send a drilling rig to the lunar surface, and Luna 28, a sample collection mission that aims to return material from the moon's polar regions to Earth. Those subsequent moon missions will likely be delayed due to Luna 25's failure as Roscosmos investigates to find the root cause of the probe's crash into the moon. The mission had already been delayed by technical issues and challenges due to sanctions over Russia's ongoing war on Ukraine that led the European Space Agency, which was to provide a precision camera to help Luna 25 land, to pull out of cooperative space projects with the country. Any failure in space, it affects the future plans of either a particular country or a particular program. Alexander Shalesnikov, an expert in the rocket and space industry and a historian of cosmonautics, 
Onyx was cited by the Russian business newspaper RBC as saying, In our case, most likely, we will have to change the approach to the creation of new landers, because for the 47 years that have passed since the launch of the previous lander, much has changed, Zheleznikov said. Science has moved on and technology has moved on, and unfortunately, over the years, we have somewhat lost our competence in interplanetary missions and in landing on other planets. We will have to temper our ambitions somewhat and realize that we will have to learn everything again, he said. Another Russian scientist, 90-year-old Mikhail Merov, one of the leading figures in the Soviet space program, told RBC he was hospitalized from the shock of hearing about the Luna 25 crash, which he called his life's work. It is said that it was not possible to land the apparatus, he told the magazine. For me, perhaps it was the last hope to see the revival of our lunar program. The fate of the Russian lunar program will now depend on Chandrayaan-3. If the Indian lander succeeds, it will not bring Russia credit for being the first country to land on the South Pole of the Moon. That means it'll be harder for Roscosmos to receive funding for the new spacecraft. However, if Chandrayaan-3 fails, there will still be an achievement to win and the Russian government may be more willing to invest. Roscosmos definitely needs a win or it'll collapse. Since the Ukraine invasion, it lost customers, such as London-based satellite operator OneWeb Limited and South Korea's space agency, cutting off a valuable source of foreign funding. The European Space Agency last year pulled out of Luna 25 and a joint mission to Mars. China, which in 2021 reached a preliminary agreement with Russia to establish a joint research station on the moon, has taken to calling it a China-led project. And in December, and again in February, a pair of Roscosmos vehicles at the International Space Station suffered coolant leaks and couldn't complete their missions. Russia's space program is a story of poor execution, low funding, and poor quality control, says Maxim Puto, an analyst with Euroconsult. Russia remains a key partner in the International Space Station, a large spacecraft in orbit around Earth that serves as a home for crews of astronauts from several nations. However, its aerospace sector has been hit by sanctions and limits on the use of Western-made technology, funding, and research ties. Yuri Borisov, a former deputy prime minister who took over as Director General of Roscosmos a year ago, concedes that Russia has fallen behind other big spacefaring nations. While the U.S. last year had more than 4,500 operating satellites in orbit and China had almost 600, Russia had fewer than 200, according to the Union of Concerned Scientists, and Borisov says his country can make only about 15 a year. Europe, India, all the leading countries are actively increasing their production capacity, he told the Moscow Daily in December, but we overslept. Don't you find it funny how he didn't mention the US? Without a strong competitor in the field, Russia risks missing out on the space economy, which totaled $464 billion last year, according to Euroconsult. In 2020, Roscosmos reported revenue equivalent to roughly $3.7 billion. To keep up with global rivals, Borosov has said Roscosmos will borrow as much as 50 billion rubles or $550 million. US dollars to build two factories dedicated to making satellites, though he hasn't provided further details. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.